Yeah, so he come to our next sections. So uh, we got uh, Sitan uh, from switch.io and then uh, he will be sharing about the API economy in the financial services. So um, are you ready? Okay, yes. hello. Hi. Yeah, Hi. yeah, yeah. I can, I can see you and also hear your voice. Can you try to share the screen? Yeah, it's all good. So I will let you uh, to speak uh, first. Okay, so I pass the time to you. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thanks so much, Patrick. Uh, and thanks API Days for this opportunity. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Siddhant, and I work as Developer Relations Lead at Open Financial Technologies. Um, it's a startup fintech startup based out of India. A quick brief about what we are doing at Open. At Open, we are building Zwist.io. It's an embedded finance platform. We firmly believe that financial services are a means to an end, not an end in themselves. And it's only a matter of time before a majority of them uh, will be delivered contextually within an existing product or service, which can drive better engagement, retention, monetization, or process improvement for the concerned product and service. So let's get started. In today's competitive environment, firms seek to increase their growth opportunities, improve their client experience, reduce costs, and enhance operational efficiency. I'm sure you will all agree with me. And to solve this common problem and get moving faster, APIs, application programming interface, have opened new opportunities in the fintech industry to offer innovative banking and financial services and solutions for companies to integrate financial functions within existing operations seamlessly. But before we discuss how APIs influence the banking and financial service industry, let's dive into understand what API economy is. Um, I'll try to break this concept of API economy in a very simpler terms by using an example. I hope it will uh, make sense to everyone. So API economy refers to the exchange of value between consumers and providers with the help of APIs. So in other words, it denotes how APIs help achieve positive profitability for businesses. To accomplish so, companies can use APIs to create new avenues by transforming existing products or services. So APIs have killed the wait time that goes into building products or services from scratch. So you can think it that way. Uh, APIs have been here for decades, but you may be wondering why suddenly there is a growing interest in APIs. Why? Why everyone is started talking about APIs all of all of uh, in uh, like out of the box, and specifically in the banking and the financial uh, service industry. So, well, the primary reason for this increased interest is the stellar growth in cloud computing. The advancements and adoption of cloud computing have empowered companies to quickly and easily integrate APIs into their products and services. Since the past decade, the innovative power of APIs has led to the realization that APIs can be a critical component for enterprise solutions. Um, it can have an impact on your business bottom line, growth, and innovation. Let's take an example uh, to understand API economy a little better. So uh, here, what I'm talking about is a cab aggregator app like Uber or an Indian counterpart of it Ola. So these apps have disrupted the entire transportation industry without even creating the large part of underlying technology powering these apps, which is Google Maps. So they have enabled customers to book a cab with ease in just a few smartphone tabs without having to build its mapping system by simply combining Google Maps APIs with their proprietary product. That's what they did. Furthermore, you can check vehicle availability or confirm booking or make payments using credit card or even receive notifications of vehicle arriving. And all the credit goes to the APIs that work over here. So now let's understand how APIs help a multinational fast food providers like McD. Think of it, you have a crave for a McD burger these days, um, and you have few options to order it. Like rather than visiting the nearest outlet, you can either order it on the McD app or order on a food delivery app. Like in India, we have food delivery apps like Swiggy or Zomato. Uh, and now if you think from uh, think about it from McD's pers perspective, McDonald's perspective, the most cost effective and easily scalable solution or an option would be you order the burger via food delivery app, right? Uh, I'm sure you all agree. It will save them the real estate cost, customer acquisition cost, and operational and delivery cost by partnering with the food delivery apps for the delivery service. However, the only downside over here is that McD might have to share a part of the revenue with the food delivery app, which is fine. But again, the, all the credit goes to the APIs at work, which are doing the behind the scenes uh, action for you. These programming interfaces help tech companies like Uber or these food delivery applications like Zomato to work together with millions of businesses to create more revenue than 
either of them could get if done independently, right? So, okay, enough on API economy. This is how the APIs have been powering various other industries. Let's dive into how APIs are powering a new revolution in fintech. So banking transformation is driven by APIs these days. Uh, we all have been talking about it. So rather than reinventing the wheel, the use of open APIs has led and enabled third party organizations and developers, which is your fintech service providers to build apps and services around the financial institutions, which is our banks. Uh, banks existing infrastructure have been on a closed doors in a closed walls, but now it has, it has changed a lot. The focus in today's agile environment is on providing solutions directly to consumers through innovation and better user experience. Now, these are some of the banking products and services you might be familiar with. So earlier traditional banking infrastructure um, used to be a closed ecosystem. Banks only provided standard banking products like your current accounts and savings account, loans, credit cards, recurring deposits, fixed deposits, forex cards, etc. Uh, within their own realms. Later, even banks started to adopt an app-based strategy to access banking services via websites or apps. This is this is this one part of the transformation, digital transformation that happened. But now, the API-driven economy has transitioned transi traditional banks from just being financial product builders to financial solution orchestrator. Um, they have adapted to a customer-centric world by modernizing the core banking system and fintech organizations. So what is happening is by embedding financial services, both banks and the companies deploy them can learn valuable information about the users. They can make lending and insurance writing more efficient while enabling providers to offer more targeted services. So more the data it is, the more efficiently the process works. This means that in future, we are likely to see a redefinition of how merchants interact with customers. They are offering maybe personalized banking, uh, example discounts, as well as more accurate loans. It's a win-win for everyone involved over here. Banks benefit by white labeling the services. Consumer benefit because purchasing is a lot more seamless and convenient. And most importantly, merchants also benefit. The, the technology service providers or API service providers benefit because conversions increase and costs are often a lot cheaper. So APIs have enabled banks to become a data-driven institute um, that provide a broader range of products directly to consumers on the platform of their choice rather than restricting it to them. So to their um, customers, APIs have tied the banks and fintech companies together uh, by allowing banks to exchange data with API banking service providers. So in this way, fintech companies can support their existing product and develop modern solutions on traditional banking infrastructure. We are nowhere going out of the traditional banking infrastructure. It will still be remain, uh, still, still be there. It's just that the fintech companies can build something on top of those traditional banking infrastructure and provide more personalized services to their consumers. These products and solutions can be seamlessly integrated with their organization via APIs. Um, let's understand what is happening behind the scenes, how, how this is the entire revolution in FinTech that's been brought by the open banking movement has been brought about by. So the step one, what has been happening is uh, banks will develop APIs for its products or services and externalize them so a partner, which is third parties, can use those APIs. Through APIs, banks will pretty much govern the product. So it works the same way um, if a MegD is giving a burger to a food delivery app. It's controlling the product, right? So banks, UPI, APIs to a payment aggregator won't have a check account balance API, uh, API, but banks offer it only to a PSP app. So they are pretty much governing everything. But do not expect that all banks have ready-made APIs. A uh, few banks have done substantial investments in developing APIs for third parties, but few have not. Uh, plus, few banks are flexible and few are rigid for any customization. So it's fine that you might not see that uh, every bank is uh, getting into that direction. But there are not many banks that are moving in that direction. Now. Or they're working with fintech service providers to so at least externalize their products. So once the banks develop APIs, which the um, API service providers can consume, what happens next is um, third parties consume these APIs um, and launch products. So they either launch a new bank or uh, something like us at what switch. We consume those APIs and then later on further give the APIs for other uh, businesses to embed financial services as part of their products. So as usual, there are multiple ways one can go about. A merchant can integrate with the banking API directly. Uh, they can reach out to the banks directly, but the efforts will increase. Um, the merchant wants to add multiple banks, the effort substantially increases. 
Alternatively, a merchant can use a payment aggregator or third-party service provider, the ETH, which I just mentioned, who in turn uh, would have integrated with multiple banks. So that's that's the way this entire banking as a service has been working so far. And banking uh, and financial APIs uh, can help organizations to get benefits like improve customer experience, make continuous innovation, launch products to market faster, uh, realize new revenue opportunities more quickly, and many more with less cost. So in an all, you can see that um, how the banking has been uh, has changed a lot over a period of time. Now at Zwitch, we help businesses build their banking services by embedding financial products like your UPI, insurance, credit line, payments, cards, bank accounts, compliance, investment, and payroll in the user journey. So we have done the hard work for you. Um, you don't need to worry about how, uh, like, if you have to really reach out to the bank to do that. You can reach out to us, consume the APIs, which in turn has been provided to the bank. So transforming into the embedded finance model enables your business to give a wider range of banking options to your customers. Make the product stickier. Hence, customers interact a lot more with the product and end up doing banking activities through it. So it will help businesses earn more than just a platform fee from their consumers. What can Switch APIs do? It can help you open up virtual accounts or current accounts and savings accounts for the customers in the group. The previous speaker talked about how uh, you can use APIs to open up an account itself. Open banking APIs are led to a lot of revolution, but how savings accounts can be opened up on the fly, how current accounts can be opened up on the fly. So well, we we are working with the banks to have this integration via APIs for your consumers. You can collect payments from customers seamlessly via UPI, NEFT, IMPS, or RTGS. You can reconcile the incoming payments from multiple customers. You can validate your customer. You can onboard a customer seamlessly. Uh, by verifying the KYC information like your PAN and Aadhaar, uh, which is a unique identification in India. And even the bank account details uh, of a customer instantaneously. And there's much more. We are adding APIs almost every month uh, for, for making businesses um, get the financial services uh, on their existing product and, uh, product and service uh, offered to their customers. So what are you waiting for? Come and build your own banking platform. How to do that? How to do that? How to go about it? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, just go to our dashboard. Uh, it's dashboard.zwist.io. You can sign up. It's, um, there's no cost attached to it. Let's go. You can start consuming our APIs. Um, uh, you can uh, avail the APIs in the sandbox environment. Read the API documentation, and that's it. That's pretty much. Uh, we are um, a developer-first company, and we are working with developers as well. So if you want to get connected with our developer team who is working behind the scenes to develop these APIs for you, uh, feel free to join our Slack channel or attend our commute, commuter meetups. Um, the link is there in the, in the slide that I'm sharing right now. Or um, to stay more updated about what we are doing in the embedded finance ecosystem, um, you can join us on social media as well uh, at zilch.io on LinkedIn, Twitter, and um, YouTube. Uh, just before I move on further and talk about how does the future look like, um, I'll take a pause and talk about a quick demo uh, which shows you like how to create virtual accounts on the fly. So let me just switch my tab. Just give me a second. All right, great. So this is a very simple demo uh, which I've created using our Switch APIs, uh, which lets you create virtual accounts on the fly. So virtual accounts are like your physical account, but not exactly a physical account. Uh, they they serve the same purpose. You can use them to load money, make transactions in the website via them. Uh, you can pay out, or you can transfer the money back to your bank account, or you can transfer the money. For if so, uh, using Switch APIs, we we enable you to create a virtual account as a wallet, or as a collection tool. So when you're creating it as a wallet, think of it it's like a virtual wallet itself. Um, what you have, uh, what what uh, what what you have is uh, basically a kind of uh, a virtual uh, mechanism where uh, a customer can load the money. Transit on the website. The remaining money remains there on the on the on the wallet itself. Um, 
you can enable the functionality of transfer the money back to your back to their bank account or they can transfer the money to the other um, other wallet so maybe a goal based mechanism is something that you can think of using virtual account as a wallet uh, or even if you want to process refunds instead of transferring the money back to the original source of payment you can transfer the money to this virtual wallet which can again be used to transact on the website so think of it you are making uh, customer stick to your platform uh, throughout the user journey you are not uh, letting the user go out of your platform so this is again leading to product stickiness um, and consumer stickiness as well if you are an nbfc or you you are someone who collects regular payments uh, from your customers you can create virtual account as a collection tool where uh, money gets added to the virtual account um, and it programmatically like you don't have to do anything it gets transferred to your primary virtual account and from there you can transfer the money to your current account or make vendor payouts or anything else you can split payments you can make automated transfers automated payouts in anything and everything so this this quick demo um to show you like how this really works uh, what i'm doing is it's a very basic information i'm feeding in over here my name my mobile number email id i'm just putting in dummy information while it's generating the actual uh, uh what shall i call like i'll show you the how it works really well so i'm just using it as a wallet but as a collection tool this time and i just click on generate virtual account and vpa so in quick time it generates a virtual account for me with my name uh, email mobile number and it, so we are using yes bank in india um for creating these virtual accounts generates a virtual account number and also it generates an ifsc code pretty simple right and on top of it i have created a vpa handle so you have an option either uh, via the apis if you want just the account number and ifsc code while we suggest and recommend that to have a vpa as well uh, there will be apis going forward which converts this vpa to a qr code now uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this uh, vpa handle um, i'm on my phone right now and i'll try to load um, a penny into this vpa uh, account in this virtual account uh just give me a second uh i am adding it um uh, wch 16303616756 at the rate yes thank swayfide um and this depositing one indian rupee here it's processing the payment and that so think of it a cost i am i'm a customer and you have created a virtual account for me on the fly um i have added a money on that um, particular virtual account and once i click on update balance it shows me that balance has been updated now so that that's how seamless and simple it is to use virtual accounts and similarly we have other apis which helps you um, use uh, uh, helps you create uh, current accounts as well savings account as well or even make transfers or kyc as i said earlier doing kyc validation for your customers all right so let me switch back to my deck just a second okay so how does the future look like i've been talking a lot about um, the ecosystem uh, how the api and api economy has led to a revolution in the financial services um the ultimate goal of api economy in financial services is to meet business challenges it facilitates uh, the creation of user focused applications um, that support line of business goals and improve the flow of data and information across operations the emergence of the api driven platform economy will drive significant change across the financial services industry that's what i believe in and no one can afford to stand still so apis will become tools that will allow fintech companies to enable connectivity between the traditional banks and the consumers while inspiring innovative developers to create new products improve existing services and work more efficiently so i'm sure you are all ready to get on the bandwagon and um, get started with the apis in this uh, financial ecosystem so that's it uh, from my side thank you so much uh, for uh, uh, listening to me uh, if you like to get connected with me that's my twitter handle at the rate said agarwal04 feel free to get connected and happy to um, get on to the questions sir
if there are yeah, any. Okay. Yeah, thank, thanks uh, for the for the sharing from the uh, in, uh, India uh, language group. So I'm also quite interested. Uh, so uh, we are more from uh, Hong Kong and Asia here. So uh, when we uh, listen your sharing, so I have uh, quite some question in my mind. Is that uh, how can you uh, address maybe the potential regulation issues and then how you can gain the trust from the bank side or from the partner side? How can you uh, uh, comfort them? And then how can uh, you tackle th this kind of potential barrier? In, in, in India. Right. So we, we have a banking relationship with more than 18 banks in India. Uh, I've been in the um, uh, fintech industry for the last uh, five plus years now um, in the financial ecosystem. Um, the embedded finance platform is pretty new. The product that we are working with is fairly new in India. But yes, we had worked on two new banks in the past. So there was a new bank, the first new bank, a flagship product, uh, Open.Money, which was uh, launched for SMEs and startups. And then we launched Open Book, which was for uh, small uh, sales shop owners, primarily. So um, in the initial stage, for anyone who wants to get started with, um, uh, with like, like, hey, I want to create a new bank of my own, it would be a pretty difficult task. And it would be daunting itself, because banks don't rely on uh, anyone who just comes in that, hey, I want to create a new bank of my own. Uh, bank APIs are not that easily available, but it takes a little time to build that trust. Uh, essentially, that's where the embedded finance is coming into picture, which can help open up a lot of those embedded new banks. So just the way we switch are there, there are a lot of other players. I'm pretty sure there would be players in Hong Kong and um, Asia as well, other, other parts of Asia as well, um, similar to European market. So I'm pretty sure there would be embedded finance platforms who are consuming these APIs, have a banking relationship uh, with a with lot of banks. And then they, in turn, can expose these APIs to other people to create new banks of their own. So um, if, if I quote an example, we let uh, businesses open up savings accounts. So anyone can think of even opening up a new bank of their own um, uh, if they want to offer savings account as an option. Or they can add in more components to it, like maybe landing, or maybe opening, uh, maybe adding a DMAT account to it uh, for trading, or, or doing mutual fund, uh, uh, like uh, dedicating mutual funds through the savings account. So those, those extra components can be added uh, by the merchant itself. Uh, we they can they can pick in the savings account APIs from ours and get started easily. So I think the embedded finance would kind of change or transform the entire landscape versus the individual people creating, uh, reaching out to the banks and then consuming their APIs because it takes a lot of time to integrate the API. Let's say, um, hypothetically, banks know you, banks uh, trust you and give you the APIs, but it will take a significant amount of time to integrate those APIs. Right? For example, there's a bank, a new bank that opens up in India. Um, it doesn't happen overnight. They take almost two years to get integrations done and get the, all the written, regulatory compliance done. So why to go through that hassle when there's an embedded finance platform who is helping you give those APIs, like who has done the hard work and giving those APIs readily available to you, right? Mm, okay, okay. So uh, another question, maybe more on the uh, in the India open banking new system. So I think most of the audience is similar to myself. So we are familiar with Hong Kong, maybe Singapore, or even European. So uh, talking about in the in uh, India, uh, talk, uh, on the open banking yeah, new system, do you think it is in a regulated approach or market driven approach? And then what is your, your point of view on that one? Can you share a bit um, the trend in India in open banking side to our yeah. audience? Yeah, it's, it's a regulated approach for sure. Uh, we also go through a lot of uh, compliance. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, we are um, ISO uh, 27001 and uh, PS PCI DSS level one compliant. So we take compliance at the utmost uh, level. And yes, while we are exposing our API, the bank APIs to the customer, uh, we also have to go through compliance and we ensure that the merchants also uh, go through the entire regulatory compliance. So we do a uh, uh, first, a KYC analysis of the merchant. Then we do a risk analysis of a merchant before they get started even to our platform. And once the KYC and risk is done, uh, they can start consuming our APIs, uh, use it in the sandbox environment. But before they go live, we do another round of risk analysis. Um, oftentimes, it could be like maybe the current business model might not be too fishy. Uh, however, uh, once they, can, uh, they start integrating with the APIs, uh, the product might be a little fishy, or you can say it might not be something which we want them to uh, go with. So that's where the other round of check is there. So we are doing a due diligence on our part, and banks are doing due diligence on their part with us 
um so all the regulatory and compliance are being met yes open banking api has uh, has led to more people consuming these apis but it's definitely a regulated market in india as well Okay, so uh, I, I saw we still have the two minutes left. So uh, maybe I try to bring one question from previous section to here. So uh, there was a, a, a audience asking about how um, the bank or how the API provider should select uh, what kind of services uh, you should um, pay it first for API. So do you have any similar thoughts? For example, you are also building a lot of API. How can you discover what API should be do now? Uh, what should be do later? What is your, uh, your, your team experience on this one? Can you share? Yeah. That, that's a really uh, good question. So we we have been um, analyzing the user uh, experience and how users interact with the banking products. So there were a lot of insights that we got when uh, we launched our first Neo Bank and then with the second Neo Bank. Um, that's when we thought, okay, uh, uh, in the market is a need for uh, one is to cater to uh, the gig economy workers cater to blue collar workers cater to people who, who don't easily get uh, uh, these bank accounts and uh, uh, savings accounts uh, that that easily so for example uh, catering to lgbtq uh, audience as well so that's when uh, our roadmap moved into that direction to first work on the accounts part then we saw that okay um, there's have been a challenge in terms of uh, user onboarding so we added in the user onboarding APIs, bank account and verification. The next, what we are seeing as a trend is uh, the consumers are looking for lending APIs more, like buy now, pay later, or uh, uh, like maybe offering a credit line or sort. So that, that's next uh, in our roadmap to think of how we can offer lending as an API uh, to, to our uh, businesses uh, in India. So we, we actually okay. analyze the trend of what consumers are looking rather than what businesses will need and we get in a direct in a way that we make it available for businesses which in turn will make it available for the consumers okay so uh thanks for your time and then i i think we asked quite some question and then i think india is uh one of the country we we are quite uh, curious and then try to learn each other so that's why uh thanks for your information and i hope we can also have some exchange uh, offline so uh same to the audience if you have any question feel free to reach out as it uh offline with his email etc and hope the use uh, the session is useful to everyone so uh thanks uh, francis for your time so see you Thank soon you. thanks so much bye